Hi, I'm David Paulson from Acure. Since you're watching this video, I'm guessing that you're struggling with new product development and you're interested in learning more about how Lean can help you transform that process. Well, that's good because that's exactly what you're about to learn. In fact, the intent of this video is to explain what I feel are the four most important key points in applying Lean to new product development. Now, even though this process is fairly new, there's already a ton of information on the topic, and I think that all of it together is more confusing than helpful. Sure, I could say, you need to focus on customer value and eliminate waste, but that's what everybody says, so that's more than obvious by now. Instead, I wanna tell you, the executive, four simple things that will clearly explain why you need to pursue lean in your product development process. But first, I want to start with this quote from Stephen Covey. He said, if you want to make minor incremental changes and improvements, work on practices, behavior, or attitude. But if you want to make significant quantum improvements, work on paradigms. Now, why show this slide first? Because we're not talking about minor incremental improvements here. See, in order to get people to understand lean, we have to change their paradigms. And as you can see, the results will be dramatic. Now, if you can remember back to when they first started applying lean to manufacturing, they could increase the throughput of a factory by factors of 10 and more simply by changing the processes. Now, granted, applying lean to product development is much more difficult, but if you do it right, you can expect to cut your development times by more than half and then double or triple the number of new products you make in a year. Now, pause for a minute and think about what that would do for your business. Now, I said I'm going to make four key points, but before I go into them in detail, I want to briefly review them so you know what to expect. Now, the first one is that profit is the goal. Now, that should be good news and may sound obvious, but if that's the case, what has the biggest impact on profit? Well, the answer is velocity. That's right, getting new products to market quickly is the biggest leverage you have for profit in new product development. So now we need to ask ourselves, well, what has the biggest impact on velocity? And the answer is capacity utilization. I'll explain what that is with an example we can all relate to, and then I'll explain what you can do about being over capacity. And then finally, I'll show you just two of the ways you can increase velocity without increasing capacity. Now, I just said that profit is the goal, so let's take a look at the four main variables that affect profit in new product development. Now, the first two are kind of obvious because they're actual costs, meaning we had the money already and we spent it. Now, this shows up in the P&L, so I can guarantee you track these very closely. And these two are project expense and product cost. So, if a $3 million project goes over by 1%, it will reduce your profit by $30,000. And if your sales volume was going to be $50 million in three years, then an extra 1% on your product cost will reduce your profit by half a million dollars. Now, that's a good chunk of money, but let's take a look at the next two. And these are opportunity costs, meaning we never had the money in the first place. And for some reason, these seem less painful, and I think that's because they don't show up in the P&L. But they're still very real. The first one is lost sales due to product scope or functionality. This means that you weren't able to build in all of the features and benefits that you wanted, so for some reason you lost sales as a result. Now this can also be a pretty big number. But now let's take a look at the next one. It's the cost of being late. And as many companies are figuring out, this is a really big number. See, two things happen when you're late. You lose market share and the subsequent sales, and you also lose time between when you launch and when your competitor does, and this has a big impact on your margins. Now you add these two together and the impact is huge. Now there are dozens of metrics and studies on this that I'm not gonna go into here, but it should be very clear now that when we compare these four costs side by side, that the biggest impact on profitability in new product development is velocity. Now is that clear? Good, because that was my second major point. But now it raises the question, if velocity has the biggest impact on profit, what has the biggest impact on velocity? Well, it turns out I can explain this with a very simple story we can all relate to. Now, let's say you work in a big city, 
and you have to drive down a four lane highway to get home. And it's Thursday night and it's 9 p.m. You're getting ready to leave, so you call your spouse and you say, I'll be home in 30 minutes because that's how long it takes when there's not much traffic. So you get in your car and you're driving down the road and three miles later there's been an accident that has the left lane blocked. So there's three other lanes so we merge to the right and we drive by. Now let me ask you, how much did this delay your trip home? Probably nothing, right? Well, I can't use zero in the equation for this example. So let's say it added 30 seconds. Now then, it's Friday night and it's 5 p.m. and you're getting ready to leave work again. So you call your spouse and you say, I'm gonna be home in 45 minutes because that's how long it takes on a Friday at 5. So again, you get in your car and you're driving down the road and sure enough, another accident in the left lane. Lane is blocked. How much does this delay your trip home? Remember, we said it was going to take 45 minutes. Couldn't this double or triple the amount of time it takes? Well, let's be conservative. And for easy math, let's just say it only added 30 minutes. Now think about that. The first night it added 30 seconds. Tonight it adds 30 minutes. Do you see that? There's a 60 times difference in the amount of delay that it cost. Why is that? Everything was exactly the same. Or was it? The only thing that was different was the amount of traffic that was on the highway. And we call that capacity utilization. So now then, are you wondering, can one variable really cause that big of a difference? Or is this some kind of unique example? Or maybe is there some kind of math or process science that would explain this? You know, it turns out that it's very predictable. So let's take a look at a capacity utilization graph. Now across the bottom, we have our capacity utilization percentage. This is a simple measure of how much work is in the system compared to its maximum capacity. And then on the left, we have cycle time. Now, if we look at a system that was at 60% capacity utilization, we might find that it took one unit of cycle time to complete the incoming work. But what's interesting about this graph is that every time you move from where you are, halfway to 100%, you double your cycle time. So if the system was at 60% and it went to 80% loaded, you would double the cycle time. And now if you move to 90%, you would double it again. And then 95%, double again, 97.5%, double again, and finally 100% is off the chart. Does this make sense? Now if a system is 100% busy, or in other words, the highway is at gridlock, it will take a really, really long time for anything to get through. So how did this apply to our traffic story? Well, on Thursday night, our capacity utilization was somewhere down in the 20% range, and shutting off one lane increased the load on the others by 33%, so they moved up here somewhere around 27%. So the time through that part of the highway increased just a little bit. But on Friday, let's say we were at 73% of max capacity, so increasing that by 33% puts us up here over 97%. Now can you see how the cycle time through that part of the system might have increased by a factor of 10 or more? So this is not an unexplainable phenomenon. Now we're out of time for the first half of this video. So before you start the second half, go and ask your production manager what percent capacity utilization he or she runs their manufacturing processes at. And then watch the second half of this video to find out what we can do about this.